How? Oh, of course. <laughs>Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Before I even start sculpting, I wanted to introduce you to Akira. Um, <laughs> it's one of my all-time favourite anime films. It was made back in like 1988. So the majority of people aren't going to remember this film. Um, there will be super fans out there, like myself, <laughs> that do. Um, I recreated their front cover of their, what was a VHS back in the day, um, into like this Mario Akira mashup. Um, I drew this image ages and ages ago, I think it was nearly 10 years ago, and I'm finally getting around to recreating it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with this cheap box frame that I bought from Ikea. Literally, I must have got lost in the time warp that is Ikea. I was in there for a good three hours just to buy this box frame. <laughs> To get my polymer clay to stick to the backboard of my box frame, I'm just using some oven bake clay adhesive and some editing magic because that was brilliant editing, wasn't it? <laughs> um, so you haven't got to wait for ages. Um, they, I just went on to texture my road using a rock because I figured that a rock would give me the best rocky texture. <laughs> Sculpting Canada's bike was probably one of the most difficult things I've actually sculpted ever because you've got to, it's very difficult when you can't have floors, <laughs> you can't hide it under textures and stuff like that. So it was a little bit out of my comfort zone making this sculpture, um, but I kind of ran like through a process where I worked from the back forwards. So in order to keep it as a relief, um, I started with all the components that were furthest away and then kind of sculpted towards me. Um, if you can see, I don't know if you can, but if you can see on the screen, um, I'd done like a generalised sketch of all the shapes that I would need to build the bike um, and then cut each shape individually and then worked my way forward. That was my process. Um, I don't know how other people would do it, but that was just the way that worked for me. <laughs> While I continue sculpting Canada's bike, um, I just wanted to take a minute to show you some work that was sent in to me by Loz19827. Absolutely amazing. I can't believe you literally took my concept of my teapot and like made it 10 times better. Your work is so amazing. <laughs> and it's quite a privilege that, you know, you took my idea and just ran with it. it it's really cool to see somebody else recreating my stuff so thank you very much and also for letting me be a part of the process because I know you had a couple of issues along the way so it was it was cool being able to help you um, so thank you very much for sending that in to me it's absolutely amazeballs <laughs> um, if anybody else has some work that they'd like to send in to me then please do over on Instagram or Facebook literally just tag me at Pixie Wolf Designs um, and I'll feature it in my next video <laughs>
before anybody asks, yes, they are curtain rings. <laughs> They were just the perfect size circle. I spent a long time searching like my craft space to find the right size circle <laughs> and they seem to be it. So uh, just goes to show that you can literally use anything <laughs> to sculpt with. You don't need no fancy tools. You can use curtain rings. <laughs> Once I finished all the little details on the bike, I ran into the issue of a windscreen. I'm like, how on earth was I going to make one? <laughs> I really didn't think it through. Um, <laughs> I ended up using like the plastic off a water bottle um, and I just sort of kept going backwards and forwards, reshaping, drawing on it, trying to reshape it again until I ended up with something that I was happy with. <laughs> um, Obviously, I couldn't put it in the oven, so if you're going to make something similar, don't put the plastic in the oven, it will literally just melt. <laughs> To sculpt Mario, I literally just sketched out a basic shape of Mario and then made all of the basic shapes and transferred it over to the main sculpture. I figured just having all of the little shapes there that I needed, um, I can go in and refine them on the main thing. Um, spent a little while just fiddling about with where I wanted him positioned and then went straight into the refining. Um, I started with like the boots and worked my way up. <laughs>
normally in like all the Mario games, Mario comes across as like a really super polished character. He's very bright colors, very clean lines. I wanted to give my Mario a more anime, I don't know, style. <laughs> Um, I wanted to go more towards what Canada would be wearing in the film. Um, he has like the popped collar and the biker jacket. Um, I just changed like the design on the back of it really. Canada's has a pill and I'm going to put a one-up mushroom on the back. <laughs> um, then I went on to create loads of creases and folds in like his trousers and like his sleeves and stuff like that. I just wanted it to have a more anime style than Mario style. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that Dystopian Mario was perfectly safe from like the biker gangs of Japan. <laughs> um, so he has been fully equipped with shells and bananas because <laughs> that's clearly how that would work. <laughs> you don't need guns in Mario Land. You, you use animals and fruit. <laughs> That would have made a very interesting Akira film. <laughs> Once I finished the last few details, um, I popped this into the oven for the recommended time on the packaging of my polymer clay, um, and then it was on to painting. For the painting, I am literally just using some Vallejo uh, model air paints. I know that they're supposed to be for an airbrush, but they work really well with a paintbrush as well. Um, and my usual paints, my Arteza paints, I use some of those as well. Like Mary? Yep. But it looks like Mary just face plant into the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> it <laughs> does. It looks like he face plant into the floor. <laughs> Honestly, I do love my daughter, but now I cannot unsee Mario that is face planted on the floor. Thank you very much to my seven year old daughter. <laughs> Crack me up though. <laughs> I thought I'd share that moment with you. Um, where it comes to the painting, I literally just started on the road. Um, I, I did a poll over on my YouTube channel and you guys voted that I should do the Akira road and not the Rainbow Road. I'm kind of glad that that's what you voted for because it works best with the Akira Road. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just sort of went in with like varying shades of grey, working my way up lighter, and then onto the details of the road. It's quite a simple part of the painting. The hard part was the actual bike. <laughs> oh, all those tiny stickers. I don't have paintbrushes small enough or steady enough hands. I need to practice on my teeny tiny details. <laughs> Just wanted to show you this tiny little owl that Serenity made me out of her foam clay. <laughs> so cute! <laughs>
I'm using a Sharpie here, wouldn't 110% recommend it. It's literally just because I was being really lazy and couldn't be bothered to find my fine line of pens. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't suggest using a Sharpie. <laughs> I did run into a few issues trying to glue this windscreen down. Um, for some reason, I decided I would give it a go and try wood glue. God knows why I thought wood glue would stick plastic. It's literally in the name wood. <laughs> um, so I went on to use some Gorilla Glue and unfortunately that tarnished the plastic. Um, so I would 110% recommend finding a more plastic friendly glue. Um, wood glue doesn't work and super glue will melt it a little <laughs> um so um to try and rectify that problem i sort of doused the windscreen in my resin which helped a little bit i have to admit but uh yeah it, i should have just been a bit more patient and got the right glue <laughs> To make this box frame useful, um, <laughs> I needed to uh, screw some hooks into it so that I could actually hang my keys off of it. Um, so literally it just marked out equal spaces using a ruler. I was actually used my big brain and <laughs> measured it for a change. <laughs> Screwed in three hooks and that was pretty much everything all done. I finally had somewhere safe to store those forever lost keys. <laughs> Um, I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. I really thoroughly enjoyed making it. If you did, then please do take a minute to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment, all of those wonderful things. And I guess I will see you in the next video, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.